I'm a female, and I worked at Chuck E. Cheese during my senior year of high school. Plenty of weird things happened in my time working there, but one was particularly creepy. I had already been working there for a while, and one night after school, I was working a 4 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. shift. My main job was usually to stand behind the counter and help any customers. Occasionally, I would clean stuff too, but for this night, I was mainly behind the counter. About an hour in, I remember some guy came up and started talking to me. He came off as a little too friendly and slightly creepy to me. I even wondered if he was drunk after a while based on the way he was talking. He told me he was there with his son and had given his son a bunch of tokens so he would probably be there for a while. I was nice and friendly back to him at first, but after he talked to me for a good five minutes straight, it seemed a little weird. He also started to ask me more personal questions, and once I saw there was somebody in line behind him, I let the man know I needed to help the other customers. After this, he finally walked away, but he ended up coming back and trying to talk to me some more about an hour later. I didn't want anything to do with this guy and kind of tried to avoid him after that. When it was finally almost 9 p.m. and we were getting ready to close, I happened to notice that the man was still there. He was just sitting kind of near the exit and he was all by himself. I realized he must have been there for at least four hours. He was looking at me and I quickly looked away when we made awkward eye contact. There really wasn't anybody else there besides him, so it was really weird. I decided to go out into the arcade and see if anybody else was there at all. We closed in five minutes now, and I would have to let anybody still there know that we were closing and they would have to leave. When I went over there though, nobody was in the arcade at all. I returned to the front desk after that and saw the guy still sitting there and looking at me again. I thought that he said he was there with his son, but I realized maybe he didn't have a son at all. It was a creepy thought, but I really just wanted the guy to leave. I saw one of my coworkers, Aaron, start to walk over to the man and say that we were now closing. I saw the man talk with Aaron for a second, and then he left, which was a huge relief for me to see that. After that, it was 9 p.m., and I would get off in just 30 minutes. I stayed after to clean a little bit, and did my usual cleaning of the arcade area, and then some of the dining areas. When 9.30 came, I was finally done, and I clocked out and left. I walked out the front door to the parking lot, which was practically empty. It was dark and quiet out there, but as I was approaching my car, I suddenly heard something behind me. It sounded like footsteps. I kept walking, but realized that they were fast approaching me. I turned around and saw a man walking extremely fast in my direction. Almost immediately, I recognized him as the man who was talking to me inside the Chuck E. Cheese. I ran for my car, and luckily already had my keys in my hand. I was able to unlock my car and get inside before he reached me. As quickly as I could, I locked the doors, but the man reached my window a second later and then started knocking on it. He tried my door handle as well. I yelled at the man to go away, but he didn't listen. At this point, I really wanted to drive away, but the man seemed to be holding onto my door handle. I began honking the horn on my car repeatedly. This went on for probably 30 seconds straight. And finally, I noticed a car on the road outside of the parking lot we were in start to slow down. They seemed to be wondering what was going on, and this caused the man to back away a little. As soon as he did, I sped off. I drove all the way home, and once I got home, I called my boss and told her all about it. I gave a description of the man and was told if I ever saw him again to call her. Luckily, I never did see him again. The first and only time I ever went to Chuck E. Cheese was back in the year 2005. I was a little kid at the time, and I remember that my older brother got invited to one of his friend's birthday parties, which was going to be at the Chuck E. Cheese. My parents were invited as well, so they said that I could come with. I was excited to go there because I had always wanted to. It seemed like so much fun with the arcade games, the pizza, and everything. I remember that the party was on a Sunday, I think, and when we got there, my parents got a pizza and my brother went to hang out with his friends. I knew some of the kids that were there, but they were mostly my brother's friends, so I could kind of do my own thing. My brother's friend who the party was for was named Tyler, and his parents got a bunch of tokens for everyone. They gave me a little paper cup with a bunch of tokens in it, and I began going around playing some of the machines. I was trying to find the best machines that would have the best payout of tickets. I saw that the Chuck E. Cheese had some pretty cool prizes you could win with the tickets. After playing maybe half the arcade games they had in there, I found this one in the corner that I really liked a lot. 
I was getting on a winning streak, and after the second time playing it, I had quite a few tickets and played it for a third time. I was right in the middle of the game, when all of a sudden, the whole thing suddenly went black and froze. It was really strange. I pushed some of the buttons and messed around with it a little bit, but nothing worked. The screen was completely black, and nothing I did seemed to affect it. I was a little kid, so I didn't really know how the machines worked, but I just figured it was broken. Then, I saw a man appear next to the machine. He was wearing a shirt with a Chuck E. Cheese logo and asked me what had happened. I told him the machine was broken, and he took a look at it and saw how it wasn't working. He pushed a few of the buttons and then went around to the back of the machine. It seemed like he was working on it, and a short time later, he returned and said that it appeared as though the machine was broken and it would be out of order for a while. Then he apologized to me and told me he could get me the tickets that I would have won and some extra tokens for the trouble. I was glad to hear this because I would have already won a good amount of tickets from the game before it broke. The guy started to walk away and told me to follow him. We went off to the side of the room and then into a hallway which led to the back. I stopped at the entrance of the hallway that said employees only, but then I was told to keep going. I followed the guy down the hall and then we reached a side door. The guy then backed up and grabbed my arm tightly. He opened the door which turned out to be an exit of the building. I could see outside and he pulled my arm and forced me to follow him. I asked the man what was going on, but he didn't answer me. I was starting to panic. The guy had a strong grip on my arm, and it looked like we were going out to his car. I really didn't want to go any further, and I was desperate. As we got closer, I suddenly took my leg and kicked the man right in the groin area. It really took him by surprise, and he dropped to his knees for a second, and his grip became much looser. I pulled away from the man and started running back but I decided to go around to the front of the Chuck E. Cheese. Once I had made it around to the front, I went in the entrance doors and ran back inside to my parents. When I got there, they saw me and asked me what was wrong. After I told them what had happened, they decided to call the police and talk with the managers as well. I remember I had to talk with the police for a while. Looking back at that day, I realized that the man didn't work at Chuck E. Cheese at all, and he most likely just unplugged the game I was playing himself. If you really like my content and want to support me, please like this video and click the subscribe button. It helps me to grow my channel and it's essential in reaching a wider audience. Most of you watching my videos aren't subscribed to my channel and that's why my animations can't reach their full potential. They aren't recommended to more people who would surely love my content as much as you do. You can always unsubscribe at any moment. Thank you in advance and enjoy the rest of the video. I used to work at a Chuck E. Cheese. I enjoyed the job a lot. It was a fun place to work, maybe because I had a lot of good memories of going there as a kid. I would do a little bit of everything there, including quite a bit of maintenance and cleaning. One night, I was working on a quieter evening. I was in the process of cleaning up a table area when I saw a customer approaching me. I stopped what I was doing and saw that there was a pretty average looking guy standing in front of me. The guy told me that he had just been in the men's bathroom in the back and he wanted to let me know that it was really dirty and could use a cleaning. I told the guy thanks for letting me know and then he walked away. Keeping the bathroom clean was one of my jobs and it wasn't one of my favorite parts of the job, but it actually usually wasn't that bad. After I was done clearing the table, I walked down the hallway to our little cleaning closet where I got a cleaning cart that I would use for the restrooms. By this time of night, the place wasn't too busy and there were only a few kids and parents in the arcade or eating areas. When I got to the men's bathroom in the back, I went inside and saw that it was empty and nobody else was in, which was good, but when I looked around, everything seemed fine. I was happy to see this, but also confused. The more I looked around after going all around the bathroom, I saw that it was completely clean and nothing was dirty at all. After that, I took my cart and went to leave, but when I tried opening the bathroom door to get out, it wouldn't move. All I had to do was push it open, but it seemed like there was someone or something on the other side blocking it and holding it back because no matter how hard I pushed, it just wouldn't budge. I kept trying, but nothing was happening. Then suddenly, all the lights went out. It was pitch black in there, and I couldn't see a thing. I kept on trying the door, but nothing was happening. I started banging on the door and yelling at that point, hoping that somebody would hear me. Finally, after about a minute straight of this, the door suddenly burst open, 
and I went flying out there and fell flat on my face on the other side of the doorway. I looked around, but didn't see anybody nearby. I saw one of my coworkers, Jake, not too far away, kind of walking towards me. He came up and asked if I was okay, looking confused. I told him what had just happened to me. Jake said he had seen me go through the door, and he had heard somebody yelling, and that's why he was approaching the bathroom. He said when he got towards the bathroom doors, he saw a large man running away. I was really creeped out when I heard this. I actually looked around after that for the guy who had told me that the bathrooms were dirty, but I couldn't find him anywhere. I ended up just working the rest of the night like normal after that, but I've often wondered what exactly happened there. When I was around the age of 20, I had just recently gotten my first ever paying job at my 24-hour local Taco Bell. The job was okay, it wasn't a well-paying job, and the other workers were somewhat rude, but it's better than not having a job. My first few months of working there went pretty well of me being the cashier. I'd collect the money and take customers' orders, and the job was actually pretty easy, and I was fine with it. One day, my manager told me that I had to work the night shift for a week. 8 p.m. to 3 a.m. I was pretty upset, but I couldn't argue with him, so I took the shift. The first few nights went okay. After around 11 p.m., people would stop coming in, and I had maybe three or four people come in at around 1 for a taco or something. One night, it was around 12.30 a.m., and it was just me and two other workers who made the food. I was sitting down in one of the chairs playing a game on my phone when I heard the door open. I looked to see a man, I'd say in his mid-forties with a hat and jacket on. He had a long beard and his hair was all messy and greasy. I politely welcomed him and asked if I could take his order, but he didn't say anything. He just stood in front of me looking at me with a blank expression on his face. I assumed that he was on something or had some sort of disability, but just then he started to walk away and out the front door. I have to admit that I was a bit freaked out but really thought nothing of it and continued to do my shift and whatnot. However, I then started to get the feeling that I was being watched somehow and was getting paranoid. Finally, 2am came around and the other employee, we'll call her Michelle, came in for her shift. Her and I were really good friends so we chatted for a bit while I was finishing cleaning the counters. At some point in the conversation, she said that she'd be right back and that she had to use the restroom. A few minutes went by, which then turned into 10 minutes and eventually into 20. I then thought to myself, what could she possibly be doing in there that's taking her so long? At this point, I was starting to get worried and thought that something might have happened to her. I slowly walked over to the woman's restroom and opened the door just a bit. However, I noticed that all of the lights in the woman's restroom were off when they should have been on at all times. I turned them on and yelled out, Michelle, uh, are you okay? There was no response from her. I wanted to let her have privacy, but I had the strong feeling that something wasn't right. I went inside, calling Michelle again and again. Once I passed a stall, I heard what sounded like a light cry and whimpering. I opened the stall door and was shook with fear. I saw the same exact man from earlier holding Michelle while putting his hand around her mouth. That's not the most disturbing part though. The man was holding a large knife against Michelle's throat. Her eyes were filled with fear and was crying like crazy. She was scared for her life. The man then said in a raspy voice, If you don't get all of that money from the register, I will slit her throat and blood will be all over this room. I was so scared that I couldn't even speak. I could tell that the more time I stood there, the more angry he got. I ran to the register and took all of the cash out in a bag and went to the bathroom and gave it to him. He then let go of her and pushed her to me. He ran out the front door, never to be seen again. All the while, Michelle was crying on me and thanking me for saving her life. We of course called the cops, but nothing ever came of the man.
and the cameras we had in the store didn't help as the footage was too blurry to identify who the man was. Michelle and I quit a week later and both started working at a grocery store. However, sometimes I think that what would have happened to her had I not went into the bathroom to check on her. That still freaks me out till this day. When I was around 10 years old, the most horrifying thing happened to me. I was still in elementary school at the time, and I was definitely no popular kid. I had a few acquaintances here and there, but I would overall not really talk to anyone. One day, my mom said that she was going to pick me up from school early that day as we were going on a vacation to visit family that was about 6 hours away. That day, at around 1, I left school early and got into my mom's car. She had packed all the clothes, bathroom utilities, and stuff you would need for a long road trip. For the first few hours, I was listening to my iPad and eventually ended up taking a nap. Around, I'd say, the 4 hour mark, it was basically around 5 or 6 p.m., and it was getting dark fast and we both were hungry and wouldn't be at our relative's house for a good 2 hours so, my mom and I decided to stop at a nearby Taco Bell. Not my favorite fast food restaurant, but I could live with it. We stepped inside and placed our orders and once we got our food, we then sat down. So, I'm sitting down talking to my mom about what we'd be doing once we got there, but she didn't seem too focused on what I was saying. She was looking over me in different directions as if she were worried or confused about something. I looked behind me but saw nothing and brushed it off as her being paranoid. So, 10 minutes goes by and my mom says she has to step out to take an important phone call and that she'd be watching me through the window and that she'd be right back. So, she's on the phone and I'm minding my business when I smell something extremely foul. I look to my left to see a man in his late 50s looking down at me. He said in a deep voice, Hey young lady, my name is John, what's yours? My mom was very strict about the whole stranger danger thing and I was taught never to talk to strangers. This guy was very often sketchy. He had a long gray beard, cracked yellow teeth, and looked like he hadn't been to the gym in years. He said again, Come on honey, tell me your name, I would love to get to know you. Just then, I saw my mom thankfully walking back into the restaurant and he must have caught my eye and walked away. I decided not to tell my mom about any detail of what just happened as she takes everything very seriously and told her we should go after she was done eating. A few minutes went by and my mom told me that if I had to use the restroom that I should go now as we had a long way ahead of us and probably wouldn't be stopping anywhere else. I got up and walked over to the restroom and opened the door. I was about to open one of the stalls when I heard a very familiar voice say, Hey Rachel, wanna come over with me? I have some candy you'll like. I froze in fear and realized that it was the same man from earlier. I did not respond. I just simply walked out of the door and my mom and I then left. However, as I was in the car while my mom was pulling out of the parking spot, I looked out the window and there he was. He was still inside waving at me with that creepy smile. I didn't look back and I didn't tell my mom. I have absolutely no idea as to what his intentions were. Why was he in the woman's restroom? What would he have done if he had gotten a hold of me? The part that still scares me till this day is how he knew my name. That still sends shivers up my spine just thinking about it till this day. I hope I don't see that creepy man again. My name is Daniel and I was about 20 years old when this happened to me at a Taco Bell. I've always been the type of person who would eat fast food almost every day. Whether it would be for lunch or dinner or even a snack, I would almost go out for fast food at least once a day. I know, not that healthy, but that's just how I live. One night, I had just finished my shift from my full-time job and working over 8 hours at a car dealership. I was driving and planning to head home, but thought about doing my daily routine of getting some fast food. The dealership I worked at is kind of in a rural area, which I guess is in the outskirts of my city, which means that there aren't a lot of places around. My house is about a 20 mile drive depending if there's traffic or not. Anyway, I didn't see a McDonald's or a Burger King or anything like that. 
However, I decided to take a different way, hoping I would find a place to eat that was open late. I ended up seeing a Taco Bell up ahead. Not my favorite fast food place, but at least it's food and I couldn't drive home without anything in my stomach. I pulled into the parking lot, got out of my car, and walked in. I ordered my food, sat down at a table, and enjoyed the tacos I was having. I was there for about a good 15 minutes before I was done and planning on leaving. I walked out of the door with my phone in hand, texting one of my coworkers when some guy ran up to me out of breath. He looked tired and thirsty and was very sweaty as if he just ran a marathon. He said to me while still hyperventilating, uh, hey, hey man, uh, do, do you think you'd just spare me a few dollars? Uh, I just need a soda or something. I told him that I wasn't sure as I don't really carry cash often but that I would check in the car for a few dollars. I was in my car looking for some money in the back seat when I hear my passenger car door open and then close. I look to see the man in the passenger seat holding a gun in his hands pointing it directly at my face. You could imagine the panic I was in and my blood turned cold and it didn't help that he had a very angry look on his face. He said these exact words. Now, you are going to listen to exactly as I say, or I won't hesitate to shoot you in the head and blood in the brain matter will be all over the inside of your car. I remained calm and said, okay, so what do you want me to do here? He said to pull up the GPS on my phone and to drive to a specific address. At this point, I'm pissing myself and hoping that one of the employees at Taco Bell would see this, but they didn't notice and I didn't want to risk trying anything to get help. I put in the given address and it was about 10 miles. I put my car into drive and we start making our way over there. The more I started to look at him, the more angry he got and the closer the gun got to my head. I then came to a red light and decided to make a decision. I'm a pretty big guy, 6 foot 5, and when I was 10, my grandfather would always take me hunting and even taught me how to take a gun away from someone before he unfortunately passed away. I decided to listen to my grandpa's advice, but it's been so long since he taught me how to take a gun away from someone, but I had to try it and I knew this was my chance. I tried to remember the steps and attempted to grab the gun from him. The gun eventually dropped to the floor, but thankfully I was faster than he was and I grabbed the gun before he did. I pointed at him and said, Now you listen to me, if you don't get out of my car, I will shoot you. He then got out of my car and started walking along the sidewalk, never to be seen again. I finally made it home safe and I felt relieved. I then gave the gun to the authorities, but I don't know what happened to it after that and I still have no idea where he was leading me to, and what would have happened had he gotten the gun first when it fell. I still have nightmares about it happening. So, I guess the lesson is to be careful out there, and not to go to Taco Bell or any other fast food restaurant so late at night. You never know what could happen. I've been urged by those close to me to share my account of a recent life-changing event I experienced while working the drive through window at my fast food job. Until this happened, I had yet to fall victim to the irrational anger some carry around all day inside of them. I was unaware of how easily they can be triggered and now that I have seen it firsthand, I'm not sure I'll ever be able to fully trust another human again. Although at this time it is still very difficult for me to relive the event I am encouraged that, to do so through this post, I may be able to begin to take charge of my life again. I guess I'll start at the beginning in order to make what came next make more sense. My name is Zoe Marie, but my friends call me Zoe. I'm currently 17 and will soon graduate high school a year early because I was allowed to skip ahead a grade when I was younger. In order to instill a strong work ethic into their young daughter, my parents encouraged me to get a job once I had turned 16. Not being one that wanted to disappoint my parents, I soon found a part-time job at a chain burger and fries restaurant near my home. I would often ride my bike the two miles after school and work a few hours during the weekdays and longer shifts on weekend evenings. So I had always had all of my things paid for up until that time. Seeing each check filled me with a mixture of awe and achievement. These feelings appear to have done exactly what my parents had hoped and fired my will to work even harder. 
I'm not sure if this desire spawned from a place of greed. I'm sure the argument could be made. Nonetheless, I did look forward to each shift. My shift that night had started at the counter, but once the girl working the window ended her shift, I was moved to her station. At the time, I had no preference between counter and window. You came into contact with the rude and crude working both, and this night was no different. I had already had a big fat woman with her three snotty-nosed children in tow scream at me for making a small mistake in her order. Perhaps the only benefit I did have was that I rarely worked after midnight, so I didn't have to deal with many intoxicated customers that came later. The one or two times I did work later, I found it a trying experience. I'll keep my moral views to myself. I will only say that I see those who partake of alcohol as weak, and I'll leave it at that. My shift was ending in around an hour when I met my last customer. From the way the gentleman was speaking, I could tell he had been drinking that evening. The transaction was a string of confusion and chaos. He changed the order multiple times and those in the car with him sounded as confused as him. The entire mess came to a head when I informed him that our shake machine was out of order. I'm aware that most drive through workers will use that as an excuse, but I promised that night it was certainly broken. When I told him this, I was assaulted with a tirade of curses and derogatory names, and then he went silent. At first, I believed that there was something amiss with the headset, but I was wrong. The quiet was shattered by the squealing of tires. The cry of the tires was almost instantly joined by the roar of gunfire. I still believe to this day the only thing that saved my life was the sound of the tires. When I heard them, I leaned a bit forward in the window, almost putting my head out of the doors. I had only expected an angry confrontation at that second, but coming face to face with the barrel of his gun as he extended his arm from his window, I instinctively ran for cover. The countless bangs from the gun and the screams of my fellow employees seemed to last a lifetime. No matter how I tried to drown them out by covering my head with my arms, they remained just as horrifying. I'm not sure when the firing finally stopped, but I didn't even consider raising my head until another of the employees shook me. I guess at the time he was checking to see if I had been struck by any of the bullets, but regardless of his intent, I hesitated a moment before I sat upright. To my dismay, two of the others working that night had been injured and Although neither of them died, I couldn't return to that restaurant or any of its kind for quite some time. Just now, over six months after this happened, can I finally see a business with a drive through window without having a panic attack? In the months since the attack, I have spent a large amount of time and energy in counseling in the hopes of regaining my courage and ability to be a useful member of society again. Whether it's due to feelings of guilt or fear, the road has been a hard one, and if it were not for the sense of purpose and the hard work ethic my parents have helped foster in me, I may not have even made it through school. Despite my heartfelt hopes and many prayers, the police have yet to find or arrest the thugs that attempted to take my life because of a freaking shake machine. The best I can do is continue to have faith in law enforcement and the universal force of right. I know someday... Some way, they will be made to pay for what they have done. The only real solace I can find is the fact that no one has lost their lives because of something I did or said.